I, I did actually go to back to Amazon uh, last summer, not not in the warehouse, not yet. Um, but, but I went back and interviewed some people who still work there, and they said it got worse since. Um, interviewed a couple of Romanian guys who were working in Rugeley, and we got chased away from the car park by security as well for for for, for vid uh, videoing and, and trying to record something, which happens to the trade union GMB all the time. They get chased out when they try just to give out forms there. Um, and they said it had gotten worse, the, pro the productivity targets had gotten stricter, um, etc. Um, since, I mean, since the book, there's been, like the book, I think, helped contribute to, the, so there's been this kind of camp ongoing campaign against Amazon from like, several pronged campaigns. So I did some videos with Bernie Sanders uh, last year um, about Amazon. The GMB union has been running a big campaign uh, against some of the things going on in Amazon warehouses. And this kind of culminated in loads of bad publicity. So now when Jeff Bezos goes on Twitter, you're boasting about wealth or something, um, there's a kind of stream of people underneath saying, why don't you treat your workers uh, properly? There's been kind of loads of investigations, loads more invest. I wasn't the first to, to do the Amazon warehouse. It, it was just, um, I think it justified doing the book in this way, writing about it in this way, spending a lot of time there, um, painted quite a striking picture of, of what went on in Amazon, particularly, you know, I found a bottle of urine one day in the warehouse because someone had clearly been afraid to go to the toilet set because they, they might have been one point away from getting the sack. And they urinated in like a Coke bottle and left it on the shelf in, in the warehouse, uh, which is quite a striking, quite a striking image um, for that to be going on in kind of the 21st century in Britain. And there's been kind of this, the book has, has helped contribute along with a lot of other people to this kind of awareness of what's been going on in the Amazon warehouse. And then I felt that Amazon felt like they had to act so to counter this publicity, so they raised the wages of workers in American and British warehouses last year on the back of these campaigns. So, I mean, there has been... Campaigning can make a difference. It's not all kind of lost. You can actually... Um, just by just making loads of noise about something and being really annoying about it, and being boring about it, I guess, um, you can actually bring about change. But, but a broader... I mean, I guess... A broader, um, a broader kind of change is needed in terms of like, the laws of this country to make it easier for trade unions to, to, to get inside these workplaces and actually um, the, the pendulum swung so far towards um, like flexibility is, fle is flexibility for whom? At the moment it's flexibility. In my book it's flexibility for um, bosses to kind of just order people around and get them to do what they want and um, we really need to you know, we really need to start changing the laws in this country to make it kind of, to, to tip the balance back. Um, we can do campaigning and stuff. Everyone can act as a kind of ethical consumer in the same way that we do with, say, free trade, uh, with free trade, with fair trade, fair trade, um, too much listening to Brexit, Brexit debates, <laughs> with fair trade um, food and stuff. But but ultimately we need to actually, um, actually start to um, uh, empower people so that they can actually organise in their own workplaces, so, so they can actually defend their own rights and give them the tools to do that, I'd say.